Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to the next session for track one specifically. We are going to get started here in just a moment. Um, I'm going to give a few people just a minute, minute to join, um, but I have with me today uh, Ringo Perez from AT&T, and I think it's going to be a fantastic uh, session and um, with Ringo. And we're going to be talking about how he's built a center of excellence um, as a part of a team, kind of his journey. And uh, and so, again, my name is Matt Clausen. I run marketing here, but have a passion not just for software, but uh, for mobile excellence as well. And have worked with a lot of companies uh, and others for years in various aspects of their software development challenges and journey. And uh, I think it. I think again, one of those things that you see is how do you scale from the individual team? How do you create an economy of scale with a or larger organization? And um, my past company, Parasoft, we saw this very often as it related to the test to creating uh, virtual APIs, um, the ability to create uh, synthetic data, test data. Uh, for applications so that you could, you know, the development teams could shift left, have availability to do the testing of their applications, even when um, those API services or data wasn't available. And I think mobile and mobile devices and the mobile device lab is one of those things that's very similar. Organizations that are trying to scale, create an economy of scale, um, a ultimately a culture of excellent culture of accelerating uh, app dev and mobile development find this really difficult because individual teams, each setting up their own lab doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, but when you can create a center of excellence around QA, or in this case, mobile QA, and at the center of that have a mobile device lab, you can create this really cool environment for the organization and mobile app dev teams to sort of grow and thrive. So with that, that's kind of my intro to the session. Um, that's what we're here to talk about today. So welcome, Ringo. Thank you for joining us today. We really, really appreciate it. Maybe you could just start with a kind of an introduction of yourself and your role at ATT. Sure. Uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, well, uh, hello, everyone. I am uh, Ringo Perez. Uh, been working with AT&T since 1996 um, and started uh, being involved with AT&T Mobile Center of Excellence around 2012 when uh, we were presented with the problem on how we can test mobile applications that uh, we are developing. Uh, during that time, uh, you know, we were tasked, you know, how can we uh, uh, develop and test, you know, real devices? You know that can be accessed remotely, not just within here in the U.S., but also, you know, around the world, where you know a lot of our developers and testers are located. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So I, I'm guessing a lot has changed uh, since 2012. Maybe take us through a little bit of your journey, kind of where, you know, kind of where you started, some of the key challenges, and then you know maybe how that how that journey has kind of gone. Kind of some of the highlights in terms of you know solving challenges and then more challenges and then um, kind of bringing us up to today. Yeah. Uh, so so basically, uh, as I've said, you know, the idea was presented to us, you know, uh, during that time, uh, 2012. You know, when all this idea about mobile mobile first, um, you know, we were asked, you know, as part of uh, a team heading pioneering the mobile first idea. Uh, you know, focusing basically for our team um, on mobile testing aspect, you know, uh, how are we going to solve that problem on providing capability for uh, the different organizations, the different teams, you know, that will require uh, real device testing. Uh, so we presented our idea, um, you know, that uh, that we were working on during that time and we were awarded a funding you know to really work on that idea hone that idea uh, we started we just you know setting up our own lab uh, I don't know if you guys have heard about zap test we started with that which was 
a good basic stuff that we were able to to use but it was not stable it was not reliable and you know as we plan to connect you know uh resources from around the world india specifically you know to allow here in the us so we actually look on several uh several available uh vendors during that time that can help us with our uh with our problem you know we tested and look on sap test i don't know if you guys have heard of that monkey talk perfectable c tests eggplant mobile labs uh, and then we ended up with three tools actually because you know at that point in time uh, I, we believe you know these are the best tools that can uh, solve some of the problems that we have perfecto mobile eggplant and and mobile labs so those are the tools that uh, we actually uh, started with uh, with our mobile center of excellence what and what year was that that you um, you selected those tools was that was so that, that was about near beyond that was about 2012. So that's about 11 years ago. Okay. Just okay. 11 years so ago. Okay. Yeah. So you actually started the journey with mobile labs back then, which, by the way, for those that don't know, uh, Cobaton purchased uh, mobile labs several years ago. So have merged those product lines. But um, so then, okay. So then take us through, you know, um, those early days. You now have, you've selected some tools, you're using them, you're trying to scale them within your organization. Um, you know, can you talk about what you know a little bit a little bit about that that journey and um and then maybe you know where where have you come right like where where are you today with with your current environment describe that a little bit yeah so so as i've said you know we started with just the capability to have our developers and testers you know access on on real devices that they can use anytime anywhere so those are an amazing capability during that time that's thinking about just 11 years ago not even thinking about automation at that time no automation just you know for us to be able to get a hold of devices you know from my desktop right so that that was the capability that was the the solution that we have uh you know solved during that time so we you know we started uh you know able to start with uh our mobile automation when we were uh, using actually, um, you know, as I've said, you know, some of the tools that we have selected, you know, Perfecto Mobile, uh, they are advanced compared to everyone during that time. Slowly, Mobile Labs, you know, uh, as part of the Cobiton uh, products now, was able to catch up on some of the object-based uh, type of detection that we were able to leverage. Uh, we also have Eggplant, which is uh, on our tool stack, uh, even right now. Uh, for image-based uh, type of detection, which was unique offering during that time. So we eventually move out of Perfecto Mobile for it becomes too expensive for us to support. Uh, we were able to find a replacement, uh, a solution of combo with uh, Catalon and Cobiton. You know, so we added Cobiton. Uh, we have mobile labs, but we also added Cobiton during that time. So it was not a perfect solution uh, then. That was uh, probably six years ago. It took us about two years to be able to figure it out. And we are still discovering uh, a lot of new things. But we believe it was a, a right decision then. And it is still a right decision uh, for us right now. So uh, we have convinced, actually, our community to fully utilize the combo and uh, be able to create our automation framework using Catalon and Cobiton. Um, you know, for us to integrate uh, uh, with our mobile uh, testing infrastructure. So that's interesting. So you use um, describe that a little bit more detail because I think this is this is it's one of the things that a lot of organizations struggle with is um, is automation, right? So getting access to real devices in a timely manner for manual testing is one thing, right? But then being yeah. able to scale that um, and do you know automation in parallel. Um, at scale is also challenging. There's a lot of different different potential ways that could be done with Appium and other frameworks. Um, so describe a little bit more about how how do you use Catalan with Cobaton together? That, that's uh, interesting. Yeah. So uh, when when uh, when we were uh, able to stumble with uh, this combo of Catalan and Cobaton, I believe you know there were a lot of integration happening during that time. Uh, between the two, that's why we selected them. Uh, 
Cat alone was able to provide us the framework, the uh, testing automation framework, because Cobiton was just concentrating on providing uh, the mobile labs capability. They have some scripting capability uh, as well, automation capability, but basically the whole framework, you know, can be done on the uh, Catalon side, which not, which also provide, you know, the capability to uh, automate your web, your API, and then mobile at the same time. So we know that, you know, uh, we're not just dealing with just mobile right now. We're also dealing with all those different uh, uh, ways of uh, uh, automation, uh, talking about web and API. So uh, a lot of the a lot of the issues definitely that we encounter is is not because the tool can do the the job. It's it's how we configure, how you you know the, the different networks are communicating. Most of the issues that we have are network blockage, right? You know, we have, you know, we're talking about uh, from our network to, you know, Catalon or Cobiton network, you know, how are you going to be able to integrate those uh, uh, with, you know, thinking about all these different securities as well that are being, you know, uh, uh, blocking, you know, th those capabilities. So. Uh, those are the challenges, uh, you know, uh, but basically, you know, those are the challenges that I uh, think, you know, you, we need to be able to understand. Uh, uh, we need to be able to uh, 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 to figure out uh, so that, you know, we will be able to, uh, you know, to do all those uh, uh, capabilities that we intend to do. Yep. Yep. No, that makes sense. Um... I think that's a good insight. I think I think I think the point here is that there there are multiple ways um, that you know or we've seen organizations have success in terms of scaling automation. And so if you are out there listening today and you haven't looked at Catalon as 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 a as a way to sort of um, help and or integrate with Cobiton, I think that's you know a, a good option to look at. Uh, in addition, of course. We do offer some other capabilities around, you know, generating Appium scripts from manual sessions, um, as well as well as you can. There's other automation frameworks you can bring to play. But let's talk a little bit about your team support, your support for teams, because this is, you know, this is one of the keys here. It's not just setting up an environment, but setting up an environment that scales um, across the needs of your organization. So, how many? Can you talk a little bit about how many teams you support, or how many? dev teams or QA testers um, that you support around the world currently? Yeah, uh, so within the uh, AT&T uh, enterprise uh, right now, we're actually uh, supporting uh, 125 uh, business units. So that can equate wow. to, uh, you know, several applications that uh, we're supporting using uh, our, uh, our platform. Uh, yeah, so so you know they they definitely they come and go right. You know they wanted to use this. Uh, you know they will invest. So those are those are the number of uh, business units that we're supporting right now. Um, yeah, yeah. So so it's uh, I, I have I have about uh, five uh, resources right now. You know supporting um, the onboarding supporting the uh, different issues that we're having between uh, connectivities, supporting any, you know, scripting, uh, probably issues that they have, configuration, those kind of things. Uh, we're also developing um, uh, some, some capabilities on how we will support our internal users, internal users within at and um, So we are creating some tools as well. Uh, we're using, uh, uh, some of the automation that we've learned from the tool that we have. So uh, those are some of the things that we're doing. Uh, that's the team uh, composition that we have. You know, we were able to scale scale down, uh, you know, as we continue to understand, you know, what we really need. Uh, we were able to scale down as well some of the tools. Uh, as I've said, you know, we cut down on the, on the tools because now we understand more and more, you know, what we really need, what is, you know, just 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 the right uh, uh, tools uh, uh, tool stack that we need. Yeah, yeah, that's very interesting. So I have a couple more follow on questions. So one is, you know, with that diverse set of business units and app apps, um, and in terms of you know needs from those groups, how many different device 
configurations do you have to support, right? Like how many different, I think this is a, co this is a common question amongst many organizations trying to scale is like the difficulty in, in uh, supporting, you know, different types of devices and configurations. But do you guys have a magic number per app or per, you know, that, that the organization has, has, has um, kind of come up with? Yeah, so so the composition of our so so thinking about application first, right? We have internal applications which is being utilized just internally within the company uh, for the employees, and then we have external uh, applications as well that are being used by our customers. So we need to think about that. We need to think about you know uh, the devices that are only for internal use, which you know have different securities, right? Uh, we need to think about MDMs, you know, those kind of things. And then we need to think about, you know, the external customer. What does that look like? Uh, so currently we have about more than 200 at least devices that we have on our, uh, on our co between Cobiton and Mobile Labs that we have right now that are being utilized. Um, so, yeah, so those are the different uh, ranges and, you know, how are we going to, um, how are we going to configure them? based on the application needs right uh, it's 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 not just you know uh, it's not just one kind of application but uh, a different types of customers as well and then and then on top of that there are some needs specifically to that devices uh, you know depending on the how the application is performing or the, the how the application is is being utilized so there are different configurations there are different ways of of us, you know, uh, scaling uh, our our devices, um, new iPhones, new Androids. So we need to to think about, you know, what are we going to add? Uh, which which uh, OS are we going to support? So when are we going to uh, when are we going to upgrade? Um, what are the devices that we need to retire? Those kind of things. So yeah, there's yeah. a lot of things that uh, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, we, we obviously deal with so many of those same things because we have our own public cloud offering as well, yeah. right? Um, so I think that's maybe important distinction here is that when one of the things that AT&T and some other enterprises um, want and or need is the ability to manage their own device lab, right? And so Copaton doesn't just have a public cloud environment like like many or like a few others in the market, uh, but we actually offer the ability for organizations like at t to scale, create and scale their own device lab um, using either our carts or um, we have rack-based um, sort of configuration as well. And then does at t connect, uh, do you run standalone from a software perspective, like the portal into the devices, or are you running in our cloud? Just maybe talk a little bit about that. I think I'm pretty certain you're running in our cloud, correct? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, most of our most of our uh, devices are actually connected in your cloud. So we have two. We have the Cobiton cloud, and then we have the Mobile Labs cloud. Uh, you know, we still have both. And then we also have uh, some, of, some of our teams are actually still using the cart, the Mobile Labs cart. It's okay. still, uh, they, you know, there are some teams that they need to have their own lab, uh, which, you know, uh, they still have the, the, the cloud because of, you know, um, network needs and those kind of things and security, you know, just that, that application needs. So we, we still have those. So we have, we have those options uh, for them. Uh, so yeah, so most, but uh, probably ninety percent of our uh, ninety percent of our uh, devices are in Cobiton Cloud uh, and and Mobile Labs Cloud. Okay, okay, yeah. So I think that's um, I think what you're what you're you know one of the things that you're touching on is that as you want to scale a center of excellence, right? Um, generally, one size doesn't fit all, meaning you're going to have a diverse set of needs and capabilities. Um, across those different apps. And, and again, you said there's internal apps, there's external apps. Obviously, internal apps, maybe you don't need as many device configurations. External apps, consumer-based, obviously you need probably more. Um, one of the big considerations you, you mentioned is, is network um, and, and then also specific security needs, right? So, yeah. so security um, is a big factor. So if we were to 
to I want to dig in on another thing, which is um, which is how do you what are your measures of success? So as you start thinking about like you, since you're not a, you're not an individual dev team, you represent and provide a service to a whole set of you know application teams, dev teams. Um, you know what are what are the you know KPIs? How do you manage um, the center of excellence? And what are KPIs that you would use in terms of like key metrics? Yeah. Uh, so when we started, uh, we just uh, uh, think about the growth of users uh, adoption. You know, um, how are they going to adopt our platform? Uh, so we monitor that the users. We monitor. We monitor the usage. Usage. We monitor. You know how many. How many are using the devices itself, uh, and then you know we project that uh, on a year-by-year -year basis. Uh, how many business units are coming in? You know, um, so we we work really hard during that time because you know we have uh, there's a lot of organizations, a lot of teams you know doesn't know that we exist. So that's where we started, and then and then uh, we. Um, started, you know, monitoring as well, you know, specifically how how are they utilizing it uh, manually or automation? Uh, so we need to figure out, you know, are they just using it for manual uh, usage or automation? So we're 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 checking those uh, as part of our KPI. Um, so there's a lot of ways, you know, and then we. Uh, uh, try to mature by, you know, making sure that, you know, we will be able, we will be able to help them, you know, uh, add this as part of their CI, CICD DevOps uh, process to make sure that, you know, we are being incorporated in that process, you know, to help them out with, uh, with their automation. So, yeah, so yep. We, yep. we, we started with just, you know, checking the, the users uh, usage, and then you know, uh, eventually you know, we're, we're we're able to check you know how how are they utilizing you know uh, the platform. Yep, yep. I think that's um, yeah, that's really key as well. Which is, I think what you what you've indicated and we find as well with many of our our customers, which is there's this maturity sort of journey that you go on. And um, the KPIs will change and morph and get more sophisticated, and you know, from from the basics of, of of utilization adoption to how organizations are utilizing. Um, and then I think you mentioned another thing, which is that transition to automation, right? And and integration uh, back into right the core CI/CD pipeline and or tool chain, which is which is key. Um, so that's that's awesome. So how so how are you guys funded? Like how? How do you, um, as a center of excellence, like do, do does each um, app app team do they have to fund you or you know is there a chargeback for your services? I mean, how how do you receive funding and how have you scaled that over over the years? Yeah, so we function as 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 a service uh, within the within the company. So that's one of the things that we try to eliminate from the different organizations is that you know they need to think about you know how how are they going to be funded so that they'll be able to utilize our platform. So what what we decided to do is let's handle all of that so that we can eliminate that you know, another hurdle from the different organization that will be utilizing it. Let's, you know, centralize everything. You know, we provide the licensing, we provide the uh, the resources, you know, on how to maintain, manage it. Let's just allow them, you know, on how they will be uh, able to utilize our, our platform. Uh, so that's what we did. Uh, we're you know, we come back and forth, you know, are we going to charge them? Because, you know, this is being charged on our organization. Uh, so I think there is that kind of things that are happening uh, behind the scene. But basically, you know, for us, I think uh, we try to eliminate that. Uh, but definitely, you know, it depends on the company, the organization that can be done as well, that there will be a charge back that can that can be provided. Uh, so we, you know, we we've, we've been we've been thinking about uh, those because how can we grow uh, our platform if we don't have enough funding, right? We need to make sure that you know that the other organizations who are benefiting from our platform that they will also include this on their budget uh, so that you know we will be able to grow uh, the platform. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So. That's so yeah. 
Well, no, finish. If you have more to say, yeah, finish on that. No, no, no. That's basically it. Um, so, so my, well, the follow-on question would be, okay, so what is an, you know, have you had to ever do an ROI, um, some sort of a return on investment, um, you know, calculation or, you know, justification or business document um, through the years to, to sort of, you know, continue to expand or, you know, I'm just, I'm just curious if that's, if that's uh, been something you've done. Yeah, uh, that's challenging if, you know, we're just providing the service. So what we normally do is that uh, we survey uh, those important uh, applications or users and we ask them, you know, what does this look like to you guys when we provide this uh, service to you? How can you help us monetize this? You know, how much is the company saving? you know, because you guys are utilizing this platform. So we have a way of uh, monetizing it and understanding, you know, you know, the, uh, the return on investment. Because uh, what, pro what we're providing them is actually a, a service that they are supposed to, uh, to pay on their own. But, you know, what we're, what we're asking them in return is that, you know, provide us uh you know some of the data some of this information so that we will be able to continue to justify you know what we're doing uh so so we were able to uh we were able to provide that to our leadership uh continuously uh every year you know that this is what we save because this particular application utilize our platform this is how you know how much savings that are being realized and unrealized you know because they are preventing uh, production issues, right? Because they utilize our platform. So we're able to figure out those, you know, by, you know, just asking the, the users, yeah. uh, the application users. That's awesome, that's awesome. Um, okay, so it, it, I did want to open up for, for Q&A. So I'm gonna just verbally say, I put it in the chat, but, you know, enter your questions, if you have any questions uh, for Ringo, but actually since, since I'm not seeing any yet, and I didn't open this up earlier, I did in the chat, but um, didn't didn't verbally ask you guys um, as an audience. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do a, a poll question. Um, so I'm going to open up the, this poll, and it should come in your chat. So um, it should be in the chat at this time, um, and we can use let's see oh here we go so go ahead and and or or there's a polls area as well that you should be able to get into and start voting so i'm sharing it now it should be live so hopefully people can figure out how to vote <laughs> i'll i'll leave this open for it's going to be open for another 10 seconds or so um and all right, I'm starting to see people vote. So the question is about where are you on your mobile app QA center of excellence journey? And um, we're gonna be wrapping this up. I do have one question. So right now it looks like there's you know several people that don't have plans, some that are trying to scale it, um, other organizations that have just started. So I'm gonna go to Q&A. There is one more um, question. So, uh, Last question, and then we're going to have to transition to the next session, which is uh, any ideas or best practices you have used to help promote awareness of your center of excellence? So what we uh, did, especially at the start, is that we uh, actually went to some of the uh, AT&T offices and, and set up a uh, working session. Uh, so we, we presented the tools, how to use it, and then, you know, before that, you know, we asked them, you know, to make sure that they will be able to have an access on on Cobiton or mobile labs so that they will be able to practice it. And then we have some uh, uh, some 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 problems that, you know, they need to solve. So that's what we did uh, before. But uh, right now, you know, we're having uh, sessions every month, uh, you know, to to provide uh, new features, uh, we're asking them, you know, anything that you know that we can help with. So we have a monthly session uh, to make sure that our users will be able to, you know, uh, will be able to uh, uh, to use our platform, uh, or if they have any 
any problem uh we invite some of our you know Coviton uh resources so that they'll be able to answer you know some of the questions that they have so we we try to uh uh to make sure that you know they are engaged i think that's the key is that make sure that you know our users will always be engaged yep no that's awesome that's awesome so hey thank you so much for your time today uh ringo thanks everybody who joined and i think people are now transitioning to the next session so if you haven't right. you can transition to that but i really do appreciate it, ringo um, and this, this, of course, will be recorded and available on demand as well. So some of you, in fact, might be listening on demand. But uh, thanks very much. Appreciate it. Very, very good. All right. Thanks, Matt. Thank you.